This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today my topic is the complications of the chronic gastritis. Means the chronic gastritis if it is left untreated so what it will be leading to. So what are the complications. So one of the major and basic complication of the chronic gastritis is the peptic ulcer disease. Peptic ulcer disease. Now this is this peptic ulcer disease basically it may occur in the stomach or in the duodenum in the proximal part of the duodenum and in the lesser mainly do, at the lesser curvature of the stomach uh, you can say at the interface between the body and the antrum like you have this you have the stomach here clear this is your stomach and for suppose that uh, this is your fundus this is your body and this part is your antrum antrum from here the antrum starts so you can see there is interface between the body and antrum here it may find some somewhat here clear in the gastric and the from the duodenum after this duodenum starts so it is uh, found in the proximal part of the duodenum so this is the peptic ulcer uh, disease basically this name indicates peptic ulcer disease ulcer means i have already told you that after inflammation inflammation chronically leads to the ulcer clear we have studied then ulcer left untreated chronically it will be leading to the uh, hemorrhage and hemorrhage will be leading to hematemesis or melena clear so chronically obviously the chronic gastritis may lead to the peptic ulcer disease now what are the certain risk factors of this peptic ulcer disease risk factors we are studying the risk factors so the number one is the risk factor that we have studied many times that is the h pyroli helicobacter pyroli is one of the risk factor as it is the cause of chronic gastritis if it if it is left untreated it will be leading to the peptic ulcer disease so one of the uh, risk factor is the h pyroli Second is the smoking, cigarette smoking. This may lead to the, chronically may lead to the peptic ulcer disease. Third one is the usage of the NSAIDs. How now I have to, I will explain you that how the NSAIDs they can uh, cause the, uh, you can say ulceration or you can say it can cause the gastritis. I, have, I think so I have told you before also but here I am telling you once again. Basically NSAIDs what they do, they blocks the formation of the prostaglandin synthesis means you can say the prostaglandin synthesis will be decreased or you can say there will be no synthesis if there is no synthesis of prostaglandin so their function of the prostaglandin normal function of prostaglandin is to carry out the vasodilation increase the vascular permeability and if the if this function is lost so what will be there obviously vasoconstriction in the splanchnic vessels that supply to the uh, means stomach and all those small intestine when vasoconstriction is there so obviously there will be decreased blood flow clear this decreased blood flow obviously when there is decreased blood flow here so the proton pumps or you can say the proton ions that are present in the stomach that will be lately washed means that are not washed away easily so the proton removal is delayed and if it is delayed obviously it will be leading to the peptic ulcer disease means it will be leading to the increase I mean acid concentration in the stomach which will be leading to the gastritis which will be leading further to the peptic ulcer disease so this is the mechanism of the NSAIDs that how they are the risk factor for developing the chronic gastritis then uh, we also have the alcoholics the patients that are consuming the alcohol clear and uh, we also have uh, alcohol and we also have yes once again uh, one more that is the Zollinger Allison syndrome basically this syndrome is characterized by the increased secretion of the gastric acid just you have to remember this for about this that Zollinger, uh, Zollinger Allison syndrome is characterized by the increased secretion of gastric acid which will be leading to the peptic ulcer disease and then we also have the certain viral infections that can also lead to the peptic ulcer disease so these are the risk factors for the
peptic ulcer disease and some word about the mechanism of the NSAIDs. Now, basically uh, in the peptic ulcer disease, what is the pathogenesis? We have discussed the pathogenesis of the gastritis and all those uh, before in our lectures and the same pathogenesis will be applied here. Be basically pathogenesis, what is the pathogenesis? There will be a disturb or imbalance between the defense mechanism of the gastric mucosa. Defense mechanism we have already studied in our previous lectures. Clear? So there is a defect in the defense mechanism of the gastric mucosa. This is the pathogenesis of the disease same. Now one of the most important uh, thing that we are studying that will be the clinical features of this disease. Basically, this is characterized by uh, this peptic ulcer disease is characterized by the burning and aching pain. Clear? Number first is the burning aching pain. Then we may have the hemorrhage. And due to this hemorrhage, it will be leading to the iron deficiency anemia. Clear? This is the second clinical features then we also have the nausea vomiting clear other features may include bloating bloating means that abdominal distension abdominal distension is called as the bloating we also have the belching clear then we may also have the weight loss in this case clear weight loss may also occur. Now, one thing I have to explain you here that those ulcers that are penetrating ulcers, they may, the gastric ulcers, peptic ulcer disease ulcers here, they may penetrate and their penetration may lead to the pain and that pain will be localized towards your back, towards your left arm and the chest region. So this pain, it may be confused with the cardiac pain. But actually this pain is not the cardiac pain, this pain is due to the penetrating ulcer. So here that this is the very important point to be uh, means note here that the penetrating ulcers, they penetrate and they cause the pain in the lower region at the back in the left arm and in your chest which may be similar or you can say that may be misdiagnosed as the cardiac disease but actually it is not cardiac, it is the penetrating ulcer present in the stomach. Clear. Now, one thing I told you that peptic ulcer disease it can occur in the uh, stomach as well as in the duodenum in the first part. So, how can you differentiate between the gastric ulcers and the duodenal ulcers? This is a question. Obviously, the question may arise that wh what is the difference between these two? Now, you have to do one thing that when a patient comes to you with the means ulcer, peptic ulcer disease. How you can diagnose that it is gastric or duodenal? You have to ask the patient that uh, you feel pain after eating meal. If he says yes, immediately after eating meal, you feel pain. It means that that is gastric ulcer. Clear? Okay, I am writing it, uh, writing it here clearly that it is gastric ulcer. And gastric ulcer has pain immediately after meal means as you eat the meal you will be feeling the pain that will be diagnosed at the as the gastric ulcer then if the patient says no then you have to ask one more question that you feel pain one to three hours after the meal or at the night he says yes it means that is duodenal ulcer so duodenal ulcer in duodenal ulcer, we have pain 1 to 3 hours after meal. Or you can say the pain is at the night. Clear? And remember one thing that duodenal ulcer, in the patients of the duodenal ulcers, this pain is relieved by the meal. Clear? It occurs 1 to 3 hours after the meal and it is relieved by the meal. Clear? So this is the diagnosed as the duodenal ulcer. Clear? So uh, this is about the clinical features of the disease. Now how can you treat the peptic ulcer disease? Um, I'm writing it here. How can you treat the peptic ulcer disease? Treatment.
द ट्रीटमेंट इज बेसिकली ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ इट्स रिस्क फैक्टर्स आई हैव टू डू रिस्क फैक्टर एस पैरोल आई क्लियर इफ देर इज एस पैरोल यू विल बी गिविंग द एंटीबायोटिक्स इफ देयर इज जोलेंजर एलिसन सिंड्रोम इन विच देयर इज गैस्ट्रिक एसिड सिक्रीशन मोर गैस्ट्रिक एसिड इज प्रोड्यूस सो यू विल बी गिविंग द पी पी आईज प्रोटोन पमिनेटर दैट आर द ओमिप्राजोज क्लियर आइस ओमिप्राजोज एंड ऑल द प्राजोज दैट आर पी पी आईज क्लियर दैट डिग्रीज द यू कैन से प्रोटोन पम्प इनहेबिटर्स क्लियर देन वी आर हैविंग अदर रिस्क फैक्टर्स इफ द पेशेंट इज स्मोकिंग यू हैव टू गिव यू हैव टू मीन्स आज द पेशेंट कॉन्सल द पेशेंट दैट ही मेन ही मस्ट नॉट स्मोक इफ ही इज टेकिंग अल्कोहल यू हैव टू रिस्ट्रिक्ट इट फ्रॉम द अल्कोहल सो दिस इज ट्रीटमेंट इज बेसिकली अकॉर्डिंग टू द रिस्क फैक्टर्स दैट वॉट यू हैव टू डायग्नोज द अंडरलाइन डिजीज दैट इज कॉजिंग द पैप्टिकल सर क्लियर सो यू हैव टू ट्रीट दैम अकॉर्डिंग टू द अंडरलाइन कॉज दिस इज द ट्रीटमेंट नाउ मूविंग ऑन टूवर्ड्स द मॉर्फोलॉजिक फीचर्स ऑफ दिस डिजीज peptic ulcer disease there are certain morphologic features so we are studying the morphology first thing i have to tell you that if if the peptic ulcer lesion is less than 0.3 cm it means that it is shallow or you can say superficial clear if the lesion is greater than 0.6 cm it means that it is deep lesion clear this thing you have to remember then then what happens that the what is the morphology of peptic ulcer peptic ulcers are basically you can say they are punched out defects punched out defects it means that they have a smooth circular oval you can say they are circular oval in shape for suppose this is your stomach here is your stomach clear just suppose it and here is your peptic ulcer so this will be like circular and the boundaries are very well defined clear punched out means something you have punched out so that's why this is very clear and smooth and circular clear these are called as the punched out defects and uh, means uh, in contrast to this punched out defects in the cancers clear in the carcinomas these ulcerations you can say uh, or if there is a uh, carcinoma so what type of the defects you may see you may see the heaped up defects heaped up defects basically they are not clear they are irregular these are regular and these uh, the heaped up defects found in the carcinomas they are irregular means like this they have not a shape and all that so this is the heaped up defects now the ulceration in the ulcer in the peptic ulcers we received the we uh, means we found the pepti uh, punched out defects clear and uh, now the base of the ulcer is also smooth clear well defined clear smooth so this is about the peptic ulcer disease our first complication now we are moving on towards the second complication of the uh, chronic gastritis that is the atrophy main was this peptic ulcer disease now obviously you know that second is the atrophy atrophy may occur and intestinal metaplasia intestinal metaplasia is basically characterized by the goblet cells clear they are characterized by the goblet cell and obviously it will it may lead to the adenocarcinoma and basically the adenocarcinoma and intestinal metaplasia they occur more in the autoimmune gastritis why because uh, in autoimmune gastritis we have studied that there is complete loss of the hcl secretion or there is complete loss of the hcl that means a chloridia occurs and this a chloridia is a favorable environment for the growth of the bacteria that's why uh, this uh, autoimmune gastritis uh, means develops more adenocarcinoma chances are more in the autoimmune gastritis then uh, we have the com other complication like dysplasia may also occur clear then we have also another complication called as the gastric cystica this i have to explain you because these terminologies we have studied before also but this gastric cystica it is a, a new terminology for suppose uh, gastric cystica is basically the epithelial proliferation epithelial 
proliferation clear with the entrapment of the epithelial lined cyst clear epithelial proliferation with the entrapment of the epithelial lined cyst means this is epithelium and this is the cyst that is lined this is entrapped within it within it clear so this is the gastric cystica and now gastric cystica according to its position it is basically of two types gastric cystica polyposa and gastric cystica profunda basically in the gastric cystica polyposa it is present within the submucosa this polyposa is present within the submucosa and this gastric cystica profunda is found within the deep layers of the gastric wall or you can say stomach clear so this is the gastric cystica now we are uh, moving on towards our next complication that is the polyps basically uh, polyps is a separate topic that we will be discussing in detail the types of polyps and the subtypes of the polyps but uh, here just you have to remember that the polyp is also a complication of the chronic gastritis clear then uh, after polyps we will be studying the adenocarcinoma and uh, gastric adenocarcinoma and gastric adenoma these are the two uh, topics that we will be discussing in our next lecture so up till now we have studied the complication of the chronic gastritis that is the peptic ulcer disease detail about the peptic ulcer disease we have studied then we have studied about the atrophy and the intestinal metaplasia then i told you some about the, the means dysplasia is also one of the uh, complication and then the gastric cystica which is the which is the epithelial proliferation uh, epithelial proliferation of the gastric mucosa with the entrapment of the cyst epithelial line cyst that is called as the gastric cystica name is indicating this cyst they are having the two types polyposa and the profunda clear so and the polyps we will be studying in uh, as it is a separate topic clear and uh, so thank you so much for wa uh, for watching the video and if you have any query any question you can ask in the comment section thank you so much allah hafiz